Hi, today I'm going to be teaching you the eye. It's really complicated, but it's it's really interesting because obviously the eye is super important to help us see, so it'd be quite cool to know exactly what's going on. It's really important that you know how to label the diagram, so have a find a good diagram, make sure you've got all those labels sorted and make sure you've spelled them right. I'm going to go through the diagram of the eye, starting from the very front, and the very first layer that you come to is called the conjunctiva, and the way to remember that is sometimes you get something called conjunctivitis, so when your eye puffs up and goes really gooey and pussy. I don't, I don't know that much about it because I'm not a doctor, but I'm, I've heard it's really unpleasant. But remember, first layer, therefore, is the conjunctiva. Straight after that, you have the cornea, which is kind of like a protective coat on the eye, which is see-through to allow light into the eye. And the cornea is part of the eye which is responsible for bending the light as it enters the eye. And we call that bending of light refraction. The second part of the eye which is important in the refraction of light is the lens, but I'm going to talk about that in much greater detail later on. So we've gone through the cornea, which is incidentally if you have um, laser eye surgery is where they'll operate to try and take off a layer. Um, and then we enter the pupil. Remember the pupil is just a hole. It looks black, but it's just a hole, it's not really a structure, and that's surrounded by the iris, which is different colours. Um, mine's brown, maybe some of yours are blue, green, or a lovely grey colour. Um, and all that is responsible for is it has muscles called circular and radial muscles, and they control the size of the pupil. That explains why the pupil is sometimes really large and sometimes really, really small. So the circumstances when it's really large is when you're in very dim light, and that's so that you can allow as much light into your eye as possible so your pupil expands to allow that to happen. In that situation what you find is the radial muscles constrict which means they shorten which therefore pulls the pupil wider and makes the pupil's diameter much larger. Times when you want your pupil to be really small is in very bright light when there's much less need for loads of light to be entering your eye and if it was allowed to do so then it might actually damage your eye. So in that case your pupil will be really small and that's when the circular muscles constrict and therefore the pupil becomes much, much smaller. So we've looked, talked about the circular and radial muscles of the iris and now light has entered through the pupil and it passes through the lens and the lens is it's like a lens in a pair of glasses or in a magnifying glass. It has a, a specific shape which allows light to be focused and it will have to vary how fat or thin it is to enable light to be focused by differing amounts. Accommodation is simply the fine focusing of the eye and that's when the lens changes shape to allow the light rays to converge on the retina in the correct place. So in a situation where you're looking at an object really close to, what will happen is your ciliary muscles contract, your suspensory ligaments become slack and that enables your lens to become short and fat so that the light rays which come into the eye, they're bent very strongly by the lens. Let's take another situation. So when you're looking at an object really far away, so the amount of bending that needs to take place to those light rays is far less than if you're looking at an object really close to. So in that situation you find that your, your ciliary muscles relax, your suspensory ligaments become very tight, they become taut, and that pulls your lens really long and thin. And because it's thinner, it means that the light rays will be bent less. I hope that makes sense to you. And why are we trying to bend those rays? Well, it's so that the light rays come together, they converge on your retina. And the retina is the back of your eye where light rays are focused onto you. And what, it, and what the retina does is it contains light receptor cells which are sensitive to light and they basically change the information that they receive into an electrical signal which your brain can then interpret. So your retina contains photoreceptor cells, light sensitive cells, and what happens there is the light rays converge hopefully, dead on, and therefore you'll create a perfect image. For people whose light rays either converge too soon or too late, you'll find that you have to wear glasses. People like me who are short-sighted, um, it's because my rays aren't coming together on the retina as they should. So the retina contains two types of photoreceptor cells, those are the rods and the cones. The rods are sensitive in very dim light, so they're responsible for our eyesight when the light levels are very low in the evening time and, that's, and they're only responsible for black and white vision. However, cones, they're responsible for colour vision. So, we know that the photoreceptor cells, the rods and the cones, are sensitive to light. Then this information is converted to an electrical signal which passes along the optic nerve to the brain which can then compute it and make a decision as to what it needs to do. So the optic nerve leaves the eye at the back of the retina. And where the optic nerve leaves the retina, you'll find that there's a blind spot, which kind of makes sense really, because if you have a nerve poking into the back of the eye, 
You can't really have rods and cones found there because it's impossible because there's an optic nerve in the way. So that will be your blind spot. Talking more about the eye, the tough white outer casing is called the sclera and that really protects the eye and gives it its shape. You have aqueous and vitreous humours which are the liquids which, find, which are found in the eye which create pressure and force the eyeball outwards to stop it crumpling on itself. You have the choroid layer which is a black layer that's inside the eye. And what that does is it prevents light reflecting around the eye and creating an unclear image. So those are the basics of the eye. I know there's a lot of tricky words but as always, especially with biology, you get writing those keywords down, write down their functions, really try to get to grips with accommodation because that will be your A-star type questions to so make sure you know what happens to the very specific structures of the eye, the ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligaments, depending on if you're focusing on a close to object or a far away one. And the same goes with controlling the size of the pupil. If you're aiming for the highest grades, you really need to get that sorted. Um, leave any comments below. Remember to ask me any questions on my Facebook page, Science with Hazel. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.